So welcome to lecture 23. So, so far we have learned how to write a reducible representation, a reducible representation from scratch and then how to convert reducible representation into a linear combination of irreducible representation sites. So now we are well versed with uh, what is a character table which is a complete set of irreducible representations. So now let us look at what is the complete character tables? So far, we have been looking at actually partial character tables. So now let's again take the example of C3V because we now know all the elements of this character table, at least uh, some of it. So let's see what are the different areas in this and uh, what are the meaning of those areas. Okay, so if you look at any textbook, what you will see is character table is divided into certain areas which are like this okay so for example here you would find written some characters like a1 a2 e in this case mostly a b e and with some subscripts and superscripts now this one we are aware of already and here you will find some x, y, z written on it, right? Which is the basis set that also we have some idea. And here you will see something written as again x, y in some functions of x, y. Okay. So x square minus y square. So what are the meaning of all this? Let us see. So let us divide this into different areas. So let's call this as area 1. Let's call this as area 2. Area 3. Area 4. Area 5. And area 6. Okay. This is all in most of the character tables. You will see it's divided into different areas. So let us talk about area one first. This we already know it's a complete set of irreducible representations in trace forms. Right, so trace of these vectors. So area one is we are well versed with. So let's also see what we know so far area 3 we know so area 3 here is the point group name then area 4 also we know area 4 is the symmetry operations or group elements grouped together in classes right so for example here 2c3 is one class c3 and c3 square are combined into one class sigma v1 sigma v2 sigma v3 are combined into another class right so that is also very well we know now area 5 also we know because we have done unit vector transformation so these are unit vectors unit vector basis sets right basis so for example if i am writing z here that means unit vector z will be transformed as this particular representation if i am writing rz here that means rz will transform as 1 1 minus 1 this particular ir representation and when i say x comma y within braces so these uh, brackets so it is it basically means that uh, x and y are not separable and thus are forming a degenerate representation so this would be a two dimensional representation so whenever you have x comma y like that that means x and y both together form the basis for this particular representation we have seen this case earlier right similarly in this case rx ry would also be inseparable and rx ry together would form basis for this so x and y 
Rx and Ry together will form basis for this. Now here, these are so unit vector basis and then area six is binary products as basis. So these are, if you see that x square plus y square, if you take x square plus y square will form basis same as z. Similarly, z square will also form basis for a1. If you take now x square minus y square comma xy, that means this and this together will not be separable and would together form basis for e. Similarly, xz and yz together will form basis for this. Okay. So typically these uh, binary products, why are we discussing these binary products? Because these binary products actually have some of these binary products have properties as d orbitals. So d orbitals properties, if you want to know, then you would want to know the binary products, how these binary products would be transformed under a particular symmetry operation, right? So these are binary products. So if we want to know, so let's say that we have written this set of irreducible representation and now we want to know, we want to understand which unit vector forms basis of which representation that is easy. So you, what you do is you create a matrix. You, for example, if you want to know what is X, Y, and Z, what you do is you carry out the transformation E on X, Y, Z together, and then find out the resultant matrix. This we have seen already, right? Find out the resultant matrix and then find out the matrix for, for the operator, right? So this we have already seen. So we can do it for E, C3, Sigma V, any operation given. We can do it on X, Y, Z matrix and then find out the resultant matrix and that will help you find out the, what will the matrix for the operator, right? The point to remember because to start with, we don't know whether a particular representation would be one dimensional or two dimensional or whether it will be degenerate with respect to x, y or x, z or y, z. We don't know to start with. So that's why we generally take x, y, z together and then we reduce it. Then we see uh, which two vectors are going together and uh, which one particular basis set is, sorry, is going separate, right? So for example, in this case, if we see that x, y would not be separable, so x, y would form a two cross two matrix corresponding to this, and then this will be one cross one matrix. This case we have already seen, right? So finding which unit vector is the basis for which particular IR representation is easy, and we have done that already. Now to find which binary product is the basis for which particular this thing ir representation is forming the basis it is little tricky and then it's better if we what we do is we take the various binary products as d orbital so for example if i'm taking d x square minus y square and then i take the shape of these orbitals as let's say so because this is x square minus y square so i will just draw x y and z is coming out of the plane of the board right so x square minus y square would be lying along the lobes will be lying along the axis right and these two will be positive and this will be negative right we know what is the shape of dx square minus y square, y square. Similarly, for dx, y, again, we know this will be, again, let's not draw the z, x, y, minus x, minus y. Now, dx, y, that will be lying in between the axis. And these will be two opposite ends, will be negative, and these will be positives. Similarly, we can do it for D, 
yz which will be in yz plane and dzx okay, which will be in xz plane so it will be same so if you want me to draw i can draw it quickly so you have if you have y z that means this will be phi z minus y minus z and this will be like between y z right now x will be coming out of the plane of the board so and then these will be two negatives and two positives and now for d z x this will be xz will be like this x z minus x minus y and when you have one so minus x z will be negative so this will be z minus positive positive right okay so this is easy and then you also have d z square which will be if i want to draw it will be something like this with a ring of positive density right and then this will be negative negative so x y z minus z minus y minus x so now what you have to do is if you want to identify what is the matrix for e for example you have to carry out the operation e onto this and see how it is transformed and then accordingly write the matrix for e okay similarly you do it for all phi together and see what happens to each of this and then accordingly write the matrix representation for e right so this again i leave it as home exercise so try to do it yourself if not we can discuss during the interaction session okay so try to identify what will be the assignment try to identify what will be the ir representation for each of this as the basis set when when we have each of this as a basis set what will be the ir find ir representation for d orbital as the basis so in c3b case for example okay so do it for yourself and then you will see that how it is transformed so we will be able to identify it easily so now that we have uh, seen so now we know that area 1 uh, area 1 is clear area 3 4 5 and 6 is clear now let us look at these symbols over here a1 a2 a3 so so far we have been referring to all these ir representations as tau i where as any ith representation as tau i which is a generic symbol but these symbols were actually given names by mulliken and hence these symbols are called as mulliken symbols so that is area 2 these are called as mulliken symbols and they define each higher representation uniquely okay so now let us look at what are the different rules for this so the molecules can be divided for these rules into linear and non linear so let us first look at uh, non linear molecules for non linear so the first is dimension defines the characters the mulliken symbol so dimension of irreducible representation if it is one dimensional the symbol is a or b okay we will also differentiate between a and b based on some other property if it is two dimensional the symbol is e 
if it is three dimensional the symbol is t and uh, sometimes in vibrational spectroscopy this is used as f f symbol or f in vibrational spec within group theory it is used as t but in vibrational spectroscopy it is used as f okay for four dimensional which is rarely used in group theory but still for completeness i will define it a full g and for five dimensional i have never seen any example of four and five for completeness uh, is the complete set of nomenclature so for so dimension of ir representation then the symbol will be defined as a or b for one e for two t for three and so on and so forth okay four g and five h okay so now between a and b so let's do it for between a and b so that is for 1D representations, if so, symmetry defines, let's say, character under principal axis. So, if the character is symmetric, what do you mean by symmetric? The trace is plus one then the symbol is a if it is anti-symmetric that is the trace is minus one it is called as b right so here dimension was not able to classify between a or b so the character under principal axis rotation defines it within one dimensional representation whether it is going to be classified as a or b okay so that is one and now let's look at various subscripts which are written so the third rule is symmetry with respect to inversion center of inversion okay so if it is symmetric again character equals plus one the subscript is G. If it is anti symmetric, that is, character is minus one, the subscript is U. So, this actually stands for Gerard A and Ungerard. This you would have learned somewhere. Which is basically meaning of that is even or odd. So you would have uh, seen that in group theory or inorganic chemistry somewhere. Right? Okay, so symmetric with respect to inversion, I, and if it is symmetric plus one character, there goes a subscript called G, otherwise it is U. For example, A G A U B G B U E G E U and so on. And this goes as a subscript. Okay, so fourth is uh, symmetry with respect to sigma h horizontal plane of symmetry. When this has to be used only if no i is present. So symmetry with respect to sigma h if so i will not write now symmetric anti-symmetric i'll just say character plus one then the superscript is prime prime okay if character is minus one then the superscript goes as double prime this will be confusing so let me write it as superscript So prime and double prime superscripts. Now also, if symmetric with respect to 
with respect to C2 perpendicular to Cn, which is principal axis. Okay. Or sigma v if there is no C2, no such C2 is there. So again, chi is equal to plus 1. Then you have subscript 1. If chi is equal to minus 1, then you have subscript 2. Okay. Now let's also look at if there are three equally important perpendicular and this happens only for B. So for B representations, symmetry with respect to three, let's call them equally important because you don't know which one is principal axis. For example, we have seen the case of D2H where it is C2Z, C2X, C2Y. We don't know which one is principal axis. Many a times they don't define it. So three equally important C2 axis. Then let's go to next page. Symmetric with respect to first C2 subscript 1 B part is symmetric with respect to second C2 subscript 2 3 rule number 7 I think this is two more rules. So for E representations, the character of C, or you just write character under principal axis. If the character is 2 cos 2 pi by n, where n is the order of the principal axis, we all know that, then it takes subscript 1. If the character is 2 cos 4 pi by n, it takes subscript 2. And if the character is 2 cos 6 pi by n, it takes subscript as 3 and can go on. And the last rule for nonlinear molecules is, and this is for D or F if you are looking at vibrational spectroscopy. Character of C4 or S4 or C5 in that order. So, if there is no C4, then you look for S4. If there is no S4, then you look for C5. And the first operation, I mean, the first order. So you don't have to look for C43 if it is different. So only character under C41, S41 or C51. If it is positive, then the subscript is 1. If it is negative, then the subscript is 2. So if you follow all these rules, you can actually uniquely define the symbol for each and every irreducible representation in the point groups. So we will take some examples, but let's first complete the rules. Yes, they are not complete yet because we also have to cover linear molecules, right? 
so for linear molecules there are much lesser number of rules so for linear molecules what do we have so the dimension defines the symbols as if it is one dimensional then usually it is called as a right in a or b in uh, non linear molecules which in this case is equivalent to called as sigma okay so we don't write a or b here we write sigma here in linear molecules and for two dimensional molecules in other molecules like non linear molecules we used to write e in this case we write it as capital pi capital delta or capital phi and the symbols you can take of different symbols okay so there are only one or two dimensional representation in case of linear molecules uh, 1d are denoted by sigma and 2d's are denoted by pi delta because these are mostly infinity point groups so you have keep on having more number of uh, uh, two dimensional representations okay so symmetry under sigma v okay we have seen that symmetry under sigma v in case of linear molecules also mm -hmm. here if uh, right here we have seen sigma v case where if it is positive it takes subscript 1 if it is negative it takes subscript 2 so here what happened here if it is character is plus 1 or character is minus 1 or we can say positive and negative it takes superscript instead of subscript 1 2 it takes superscript plus and superscript minus okay, that's the only difference rest all the rules will remain same for these molecules also okay so this defines the complete character table so now let us look at the example with these rules let us look at the example of uh, c3v that we have been discussing right so these are a one dimensional representations the first two are this is one dimensional this is one dimensional the symbols have to be either a or b right and this is two dimensional so symbol has to be e so now if you see both of them have been given letter a and not b why because for both of them the principal axis is positive and that's why both are a now one and two because character under sigma v is positive for this one so that's why it is subscripted as 1 and negative for this one. So that's why it is subscripted as 2. So for E, there is no superscript subscript required because there is only one E and that uniquely defines this particular IR representation, right? So we will take up more examples in next class and we will see how we will take at least two examples. But meanwhile, you will also try to solve, to try to look at different uh, character tables and see based on these rules can you actually uniquely determine the Mollikan symbol for each given IR representation. We will see how it is done for at least two examples in next class but let's do it at home yourself and then see if we have any doubts okay. So that is all for today and see you in next class.